think that Britney is trying to show them signs in her TikToks and Instagram videos that she's in trouble. Since 2008, she hasn't been able to control her own finances unless it's approved by her father. Hi guys, so a lot of you have been asking me more questions in the comments and I'm here to answer all of your questions. I feel that if you're an adult, you should be able to live your life and not be controlled. Brittany, like anyone else, should have the freedom to live the life that's most authentic to her. Britney Spears has been under a conservatorship since 2008. This means she hasn't been able to drive her car, choose her own medical care, or control her own day-to-day -day life for over 13 years. Over the previous five parts of the series, we have explored the depths of Britney's childhood, career, conservatorship, and the movement that formed because of it. As the Deep Dive Presents Free Britney finale is coming very soon, but isn't quite here yet, we want to thank you all for 80,000 subscribers and nearly 4 million views on this series. For real, thank you so much for all of the support and interest in Britney's conservatorship. Please keep fighting the good fight to end conservatorship and spread the Free Britney message in any way you can. In part six of Deep Dive Presents Free Britney, we are going to be going over one of the most disturbing moments of Britney's conservatorship battle. The Free Britney movement going viral and reaching extreme new heights, as well as chronicle Britney's children's relationship with Jamie Spears, the man in control of her conservatorship. And detail just how the Free Britney movement exploded. <laughs> As the Free Britney movement kept growing, the 730 evaluation investigating the conservatorship was underway. Jamie and Team Conservatorship were under a microscope, not only in the public eye, but within the court system. This caused Team Conservatorship to start unraveling. Larry Rudolph stopped commenting on Britney Spears and quietly disappeared. Lou Taylor privated her social media accounts, and Jamie Spears started to scramble under pressure. It would appear that Jamie would go to great lengths to make sure Britney couldn't escape the conservatorship by leaving California. So he filed the conservatorship in eight additional states and in Washington, D.C. He primarily filed in states where Britney has friends and family or states she frequently traveled to, such as Hawaii. Just days after Jamie took these additional legal measures to protect the conservatorship, he would see Britney and her sons allegedly for the first time since Britney told Judge Brenda Penny that her father forced her into a mental health facility. During this visit, Jamie's true color would show and the world would see just how unhinged he had become. While visiting, Jamie Spears began arguing with Britney's son, Sean, who was just 13 at the time. During the argument, Sean became scared of his grandfather's reaction, so he ran into a room locking the door. Per reports, Jamie was so enraged, he broke down the door and violently shook Britney's son. Britney immediately got her boys away from their grandfather and called Kevin Federline to have him take their sons for the night. Britney's family drama continues. According to The Blast, the singer's father, Jamie, got in an argument with the eldest son, 13-year-old Sean Preston, at his home last month. Kevin's lawyer, Mark Vincent Kaplan, tells People magazine, Britney did the right thing and removed the children and took them out of there, but the trauma to the kids is nonetheless. A source at Us Weekly adds Preston was not physically injured but very scared and shaken up. That was enough for Kevin to seek a restraining order on behalf of both his sons with Brittany. According to Us Weekly, Jamie cannot come near Preston or near 12-year-old Jaden for three years. The case was then sent to the Ventura County District Attorney where charges against Jamie Spears would be considered. One of Britney's biggest fears has always been losing custody time with her boys. And although Britney did everything right in the situation, her custody time was temporarily reduced to just 10%. Yet again, she had to suffer the consequences of her father's actions. Not only did this hurt Britney, but it had a huge impact on her sons. And you can see this in how Britney's son, Jaden, describes their grandfather a year later. 
Britney Spears' youngest son may be in a little bit of trouble after he spilled some secrets in an Instagram Live. He did reveal that his mom told him she may quit music. And that actually seems to be true. A source tells us that Britney is in no rush to start recording music again. The thought barely crosses her mind. This is the longest break between album cycles and she's perfectly content with it. One person he does not approve of is his grandfather, Jamie Spears, who he called a jerk. Is your grandpa a jerk? Yeah, he's pretty big. Pretty. You can go die. The restraining order presented a major obstacle for team conservatorship. The hearing where the results of the 730 evaluation and investigation into whether or not Britney was receiving adequate medical care after being forced into a mental health facility was just a few weeks away. Now Jamie Spears himself was under investigation and could not legally interact with Britney's kids. It brought up the question, how can Jamie be responsible for Britney's welfare, thus being responsible for the welfare of her children, when there is an active restraining order against him for abuse? TMZ, who has some form of a relationship with Team Jamie, reported that Jamie was afraid that either Lynn Spears or Kevin Federline would try and challenge the conservatorship at the September hearing. Sources close to Britney said she wanted her father out right away, so team conservatorship had to act quick. Jamie filed to temporarily relinquish his powers as personal conservator, saying it was due to health reasons. He asked that Jody Montgomery, who was Britney's care manager at the time, be appointed as temporary conservator of the person until January 2020. I do think it's interesting that the story we were told why Jamie Spears stepped down as personal conservator, you know, he cited health reasons. And I think it's curious that he would step down from conservator of her person, but not of her estate. Why can he still maintain control of the money? Why is he still conservator of the estate? If he is dealing with health struggles, shouldn't he step down from both roles? Whenever there's an issue, blame it on Jamie's health. A very early red flag for me within the movement was when Britney canceled domination and cited her father's health. It seemed off knowing Britney's relationship with her father. If Jamie was challenged as conservator due to the recent investigation, he may have lost his power as conservator of Britney's estate as well, which is where the money is. In order to keep control of the estate, he had no other choice but to step down as personal conservator. But again, the question is, how can Jamie Spears, with a history of abuse, an active restraining order who is currently in poor health and has no expertise with major estates such as Britney's, how is he solely responsible for her entire $59 million estate? Dr. Timothy Benson was the psychiatrist responsible for Britney Spears' care. He died suddenly as the case of her conservatorship is coming to the forefront. Next week, a judge will receive a report that will determine if the medical care given to her was appropriate. Questions were raised when she entered a mental health facility. Brittany has been in the mental facility since mid-January. And many people, including Britney Spears' mother, Lynn, were critical of those decisions made by her father, Jamie, who had been in charge of her conservatorship for a long time. He now is asked to be relieved of those duties as he's being investigated for allegedly abusing his grandson. That's uh, something's going on here. I know. There's a spiral that's getting bigger and bigger. I can smell it. Something's wrong here, and I, I predict or speculate some kind of or something might have played a part in this. This is not good. On the same day, Jamie Spears reportedly abused Britney's son. The doctor responsible for Britney's medical care suddenly passed away. His care of Britney had been under a microscope for the past three months by a court reviewer. The results of the 730 evaluation were set to be presented at the upcoming court hearing. Just a day before the hearing, the Ventura County District Attorney said they will not be pursuing child abuse charges against Jamie Spears. However, the restraining order will remain in place. This hearing would prove to be huge for the Free Britney movement, as more Free Britney advocates were coming out of the woodwork than ever before. Fans out in force to support their favorite uh, singer. It's the battle over Britney. Pop star Britney Spears' parents faced off in court as they fight over conservatorship 
of their daughter. Mm -hmm. It's a court case, it's making headlines of course, it is Britney Spears. Britney Spears' parents mm -hmm. concerned over the fate of their troubled daughter. KKL Live's Leslie Marin is live in downtown LA with details on the battle over conservatorship mm -hmm. and the fan movement to free Britney. <laughs> yeah, Sharon Juan, I will tell you, both of her parents did show up to court today, but Britney Spears did not. You can see behind me some fans still lingering behind here outside the courthouse today, just wanting to hear the latest on who, if anyone, will be the conservator for the singer. All eyes were on the Free Britney movement as a sea of pink signs fled across the courthouse steps. What do we want? When do we want it? Yeah. Loud and with Free Britney signs in hand, fans marched outside the Stanley Moss courthouse today. What do we want? Free Britney! They're hoping Britney Spears and the judge will hear them as lawyers went back to the courtroom in the battle over the control of the singer's finances and part of her personal life. I mean, I think it's a basic human rights case at the end of the day. There's so much conservatorship that goes on not only in Britney's case, but in so many other cases. And the conservatorship now! Back outside the courtroom, free Britney fans are sending this message to the pop princess tonight. So she kind of helped me come out. She helped me want to dance. She wanted to help me to be my own person. And so much more had happened in the last few weeks between Jamie stepping down as personal conservator and the psychiatrist whose care was being evaluated passing away. The public may never know what happened with that 7.30 evaluation, as the transcripts from this hearing were completely sealed. What we do know per U.S. Weekly is that Brittany wanted her father removed immediately as conservator of her estate. Lynn, who was at the hearing, agreed, saying that it is in Brittany's best interest to have a neutral third party handle the estate. But no rulings were made, and a new court date was set for January 2020, when Jody Montgomery's temporary conservatorship is to expire so they could reevaluate. This meant Jamie Spears still had a huge level of control over Brittany. Starting in 2008 during the circus tour, all the way through the Vegas residency, we know Jamie has used either her children or her love for performing to control her. While he couldn't use her children anymore, on September 3rd, it was revealed that her father, Jamie Spears, is being investigated for allegedly shaking her oldest son, Sean Preston. As conservator of her estate, he could still use her ability to work as a means of control. This was a very bizarre time for Britney, as just two days after the hearing, Britney went with her boyfriend, Sam Ascari, to an award show, where you can see just how upset she truly was. They left immediately after only a few red carpet pictures. And one week later, Britney posted to Instagram saying, I hope y'all haven't forgotten about me. I'm taking this transition in my life to focus on what I really want. I've been working non stop well since I was eight years old in the business sometimes it's good to stop and reflect miss you all I really do have the best fans in the world after years and years of non-stop work Brittany was finally able to take some time for herself and push back at the conservatorship not only was this the beginning of Brittany boycotting work until her father was removed from her conservatorship this was also the beginning of the free Brittany movements explosion into the mainstream as all eyes were on Brittany in the movement surrounding her conservatorship. Fans were becoming increasingly worried, as they knew she needed their support now more than ever. Hi guys, just checking in with all of you who are concerned about me. What do we want? Free Britney! When do we want it? Now! I'm a Sagittarius. I'm very keen on freedom. I love freedom. I love independence. Hi guys, so a lot of you have been asking me more questions in the comments, and I'm here to answer all of your questions. So the first main question that you guys have been asking me is what's my favorite Disney movie? My favorite Disney movie is probably Frozen, just because I really like the fact that the two sisters, um, their relationship, and then one goes off and lives in a castle just because she can't deal anymore. Now the first sign that this video might be a cry for help is the fact that she specifically says that her most asked question is what is your favorite Disney movie? And Britney was doing these like weird fashion show things on Instagram. Instagram. She'd just walk in from one side wearing something, walk out, and people noticed and left comments of concern. There are a lot of people making fun of Britney over her recent Instagram and TikTok videos, where she does these like model walks. She shows off her outfit, but she's doing it like over and over again. And I have to be honest, I cannot watch one of those videos of Britney without feeling concerned. So in one of Britney's TikToks, she is wearing a black dress. To all my friends at the L community happy month you guys bring so much heart passion and articulate everything you do because of you i've had the best nights of my life i love you so much it hurts happy pride month baby be quiet 
And somebody in the comments section of that TikTok says, if you need help, wear yellow in your next video. Then a few days later, Britney hops onto TikTok and wears yellow. Is, is this a coincidence? Like, is she trying to tell us something without saying anything at all? So she's 23.5 million followers. So these are the amount of people that are seeing these posts. What I find weird is that a lot of the time when there are posts where people do get concerned, they end up getting deleted. Like even the one referenced in this New York Times article is just Gone. It's perfectly reasonable to delete Instagram posts, especially if people are commenting things of concern. But keep in mind one point that I said about the conservatorship. She is not allowed to use social media unmonitored. So I don't know, like weird posts like that being deleted. It's entirely possible that someone from the team or her father is deleting these because people are asking questions. Is Britney Spears just having fun or is she in trouble? 38 year old pop star posted this bizarre dancing video wearing a sultry red halter top. Many fans are seeing it as a cry for help. I feel like her Instagram has a loophole. I think like who's in charge of other things versus Instagram, there's some sort of discrepancy there and there's a loophole. And I feel like there's going to be a battle over that. Okay, so a lot of people have been saying that a lot of my posts are not new, but they're old. But just to let you guys know, none of my pictures or posts are more than a month old. Yes, I know, I did wear it the same top 17 times, but it's for a project. Project Rose, and you will be seeing way more of Project Rose in the future. Online, you know, she's she, these videos are just definitely out of character for her, right? This is kind of a new thing. I definitely don't really kind of know her personally enough to know any of the details, um, but I also think that, you know, Brittany, like anyone else, should have the freedom to live the life that's most authentic to her. I loved your comment that you made recently about uh, the drama surrounding Britney Spears conservatorship. Yeah, I saw her this summer. Um, we've had dinners, saw her in Malibu. I just, I love her so much. I just, I feel that if you're an adult, you should be able to live your life and not be controlled. When Free Britney went viral because of TikTok, that was really crazy because we got so much more attention from more members of the general public and more Britney fans. I was excited and inspired by the TikTok explosion. Everyone seemed to be talking about Free Britney. To start to see it go viral in that way was, was really exciting. That being said, TikTok tends to take a little bit more of a, the conspiracy route. All of a sudden it was like, Gen Z is on this and we need them. I am in my mid thirties. I am not a TikToker. <laughs> and to see the way that they were really taking in this information and sure, some of it was more conspiracy in nature than others. But at the end of the day, it was getting information out there and encouraging people to learn more about this situation. It's difficult for me to understand how what she does on Instagram has in any way um, a relationship to her conservatorship or to any conservatorship because with the documents that are public, Britney Spears just does not legally qualify for a conservatorship, especially a probate conservatorship. So I think it's a bit misguided to say that her, you know, Instagram has any correlation to a conservatorship. She's just dancing. She's a dancer. Like she's been dancing since she was a child. But the fact remains that nobody had a problem with her dancing when she was doing it half for money, but they have a problem when she's doing it for her own enjoyment. And I think that is something that we need to reckon with. TikTok is something that could be used to the movement's advantage and to Britney's advantage if it maintained and stayed rooted in fact. Britney has made hundreds of millions of dollars over the last 12 years since she's been under this conservatorship. So the estate should have, even if they didn't invest the money, increased. If the whole point of this conservatorship was to protect Britney's assets and money, then it's it's failing. I think that when it comes to being like, oh my God, Britney Spears is spelling help with her eyelashes. Many people noticed that her eyelashes actually spell out call 911. I think that's when we start getting into dangerous territory, which again, we have 13 years worth of fact on record that we should be focusing on and using that to help further amplify the movement, not conspiracy theories. I haven't watched a lot of the Free Britney TikToks. I've heard that they spotlight a lot of the conspiracy theories about Britney Spears' Instagram. I think it really got Gen Z involved in Free Britney, and I'm really grateful for that. And I think that if that is someone's way into the movement to learn about conservatorship abuse, I welcome, you know, any way to spread the message of the movement. I think that 
any discussion about Britney and the movement and what's going on with her is good only because it draws attention. Did we all miss the secret message Britney Spears was trying to tell us? We need to talk about this. I don't believe everything that I hear. I don't believe in conspiracy theories as they are. They cloned Britney Spears. I like facts. I think it helped raise awareness for sure, but I also think it was problematic. There were some videos that I think went a little far with their perceptions of Britney's Instagram and different things like that. Free Britney! But I also believe that we got a new group of people talking about Britney. I'm just like on Instagram one day and I see this conspiracy theory video about like Howie Mandel being held against his will in his house or something. You guys, I think that Howie Mandel is being held captive. And I was just like, that's not, that can't be true. So I like actually made a TikTok and then the algorithm of course starts recommending conspiracy theory videos to me and you know, very, very shortly thereafter, a video with Britney Spears spinning around with some flowers comes up and Moonwalk Mars says like, you all are making fun of her, but she has no human rights and she can't drive a car and she can't see her kids and she can't do all this stuff. And he was listing all the things she couldn't do. And I was like, that's ridiculous. There's no way Britney Spears is trapped against her will. She's Britney Spears. So I said, you know what I'm gonna do is because I have this legal background at the time I had just graduated from law school. I said, I'm gonna go onto these legal databases. I'm gonna find the court documents and then I'm going to figure out what's really going on behind this because there's really no way that she's being trapped and she can't drive and all this stuff. So I go onto the court website and I'm just ready to debunk this silly conspiracy theory and I couldn't. And in fact, it actually verified the things that Moonwalk Mars had said in his video, which was she cannot make her own decision. And pretty much immediately I'm radicalized because I kind of felt like a lot of the hype around the Free Britney movement was a little conspiratorial. Trying to decode Britney's Scrabble Instagram post. It was a bit, I'm a Britney fan and I have feelings and, and my feelings are that Britney is trapped. Stand up for what's right, come on. Free I'm, a, I'm a type of person too. Like I get a feeling and I'm about to find facts to back it up. But I felt like I had something to offer. I could show that it is actually true. It is actually true, you're right. It isn't just you think. Here's the court documents publicly available that their lawyers put together. And the more court documents I read, the more radicalized I became because I know it is a massive exploitation of what should have been something that would be helpful for people. I would probably not be in this movement if it were not for conspiracy videos on TikTok. These conspiracy theories, while spreading the word, unfortunately would become a scapegoat for Jamie Spears to attempt to discredit the entire Free Britney movement by labeling it as one big conspiracy theory. Britney is no stranger to making headlines, but now her father Jamie is sounding off about that hashtag Free Britney, telling critics they don't know what they're talking about. This morning, Britney Spears' father Jamie speaking out against the viral campaign hashtag Free Britney, calling it a joke and a conspiracy. Pop star's dad telling the New York Post page six in a new interview, all these conspiracy theorists don't know anything. It's up to the court of California to decide what's best for my daughter. It's no one else's business. The hashtag free Britney has been used more than 108,000 times on Instagram. So far, Britney herself has not responded to her father's latest comments. But 13 years of court documents and evidence brought legitimacy to the movement. And the public realized this as the fight would rage on. No matter which way Jamie would try to spin it, he was on borrowed time and the clock was ticking. These TikToks weren't the first time Britney's social media was scrutinized. As back in 2019, many fans questioned the validity of the domination cancellation post and many posts after that, many believing this wasn't Britney posting at all. In a podcast, Britney's brother, Brian Spears, commented on her social media saying, Is Britney in control right now of her social media account or? Yeah, yeah, she is. Absolutely. I'm, I I don't know how what the details are of it, of like how you know if she actually physically does it or if she sends it to you know a team. But yes, yeah, she is. Oh, oh my okay. gosh! My time is running, so I have to ask you something. Let's tweet that out. <laughs> All right, you got yeah. it. As we know, Britney's conservatorship gives her very few freedoms, and her social media is considered part of her empire, as it is an asset. Currently, her father controls and has access to all of her assets. 
Twitter account Britney Hiatus posted a thread exposing who really ran Britney's social media accounts. And what Hiatus found was concerning to say the least. Cassie Petrie has been posting on Britney's Instagram for some time because she was hired through her company, Crowdsurf, to run Britney's Instagram years ago. She has been managing Britney's account and like I said, she's even admitted to posting on it. So for instance, Britney brought up Steven Tyler in that Instagram caption. Well, well, Steven Tyler is actually very, very close to Lou and Taylor, who hired Cassie Petrie. When we walked into the studio, I think Jade, you had commented you saw like our beads here, and you said, yes. "Oh, it makes me think of Britney." And the, Oops, I did yeah, it again. Absolutely. And one of the things I loved on your social media, Cassie, you had a picture of Britney, and someone had commented, "Hey, why does Britney follow you?" And someone else then commented, saying, <laughs> "Clearly, they're friends." <laughs> I loved that. People invent their own narratives online. About, like I, sometimes I'll go into like a message board somewhere and just read like. 32 pages of something, you're like, none of that is accurate, but I love how creative people are. It's true, amazing. True. I love, like, just the narratives that people, and sometimes the narratives, they, they guess them, but they're right, and they are really smart about deciphering. Sometimes it just completely goes somewhere else, but you have to admire, like, the creativity, especially if the conversation stays in, like, a positive lane. After this video, Cassie released a statement on Instagram saying Britney's social media is her own and criticized Britney's supporters for their conspiracy theories and assumptions. But this, again, wasn't coming from Britney. Britney's supporters would also soon criticize a post made on Britney's official Instagram account in regards to the New York Times documentary, Framing Britney Spears, which we will take a deeper dive into during the finale of this series. The post states that Britney didn't really watch the documentary, but also cried for weeks about the way she was depicted. Many supporters and advocates were quick to point out Sam Iscari's immediate response to Framing Britney Spears. I saw your Instagram story. I know you're upset with Jamie right now. Is, is there anything that he can do to repair the relationship? What would you like to be seen? I'm not upset at anybody, but you know what? It is what I said is what I said. So I think he's a. D that's just my opinion, but I'm not gonna go into details. Uh, that's it, man. Can you guys ever be on good terms? I hope so. Once he starts treating his daughter right, right, then we can be on good terms. Now, now a lot of fans are, are concerned with Britney after seeing the Hulu doc. Thank you to all the fans. How's Britney doing? Is she okay? She's doing amazing. And how that didn't line up with the Instagram post, considering they are in a relationship and Sam is the closest person to Britney. In October of 2019, Britney's team announced a one-of-a-kind pop-up experience, saying it was created to celebrate Britney. It was inspired by Britney's various albums and eras throughout her career, including a full school set from Baby One More Time, complete with a place to send Britney notes, a space set inspired by Oops I Did It Again with portholes that played the music video on loop, a dark room inspired by the Stronger music video, a Me Against the Music neon room and hallway complete with a set that dubbed fans into the actual music video, a full airline set inspired by Talk a big top circus that included carnival inspired set pieces and a ball pit, a blackout inspired room complete with interactive candles that let you blow them out and small nods to the dark nature of the album, a forest set with projected waterfalls complete with a big snake inspired by her 2001 VMA performance, and a large area inspired by the Piece of Me video, including a place to pose for a tabloid. The very medium that was used to rip Britney to shreds for decades was now being used by her team to celebrate her. It was all very suspect, and Britney's involvement was almost non-existent. I viewed the zone in LA as a Britney Spears museum and it was everything that my little heart desired. I wanted everything to do with it and I wanted to visit and buy everything that was for sale inside and go in the different rooms. It was a borderline dream come true. I just looked at it and I was like, what is this? Okay, it's cool, it's Britney related, I'm interested. But I didn't really think about it much at first. I'll be honest, I was like, oh, maybe I'll go to that at some point, seems kind of cool. But then I never really thought about it again, and then I was kind of like, is she gonna be there? If not, then I don't really care, you know? And well, then obviously you found out why she wasn't there. And The Zone seemed to be a perfect new business venture for team conservatorship, as they didn't need Britney to be involved. They could cut Britney the human out of this project entirely. Organizers from The Zone had said they had her blessing. You think there's ever gonna be a moment where Britney Spears will walk through The Zone? She absolutely will. She's so excited about it. She gave us her blessing. She donated her costume to us. She loves her fans and really wants them to step into her world as well. However, she never showed up to the event space. So sorry guys, I couldn't make it to The Zone. Unfortunately, I've been dancing and I broke my foot, but you guys sent me these really cool letters and you put them out in my locker and I'm so excited to share them with you. It seems as 
though she decided that she didn't want to work at all. So even a simple showing up to this opening, she was against it. This caused concern amongst Free Britney supporters, and many began to spread the word of boycotting the zone. Once I realized what was happening in the background and why they used this Britney Spears museum, that was a shock. Once it was clear to me anyway, and didn't feel like a rumor anymore that she was on a work hiatus and didn't want to provide them with anything, then I realized that's what they're doing this for, is that they decided, okay, well, if she's not going to be there, if she's not going to perform, let's make money off of her name. The Free Britney movement was very loud as well. This caused Britney's team to run into a roadblock. They were curating the ultimate fan experience, but Britney's true supporters and advocates didn't buy it, as it had team conservatorship written all over it. So after that, I was like, she doesn't seem interested in this, rightfully so, so I'm not interested in it. The Zone wasn't the only cash grab of 2020 for team conservatorship. Britney's legacy would be profited off of even more as her team began releasing vinyl and cassette copies of her albums through Urban Outfitters and more licensed merch to different companies. But the most bizarre releases were yet to come, as in June, Britney's conservatorship came completely out of left field and released the Japanese bonus track off of Glory in the United States for its first ever official US release. Keep in mind, this was four years after Glory's initial release. Mood Ring by Demand already had a cult following, but this was now being released to the masses, and even had several remixes created for the song. Britney's merchandise and music sales began revving up even more this year, as her team was using the press of the Free Britney movement to sell even more Britney merchandise, and it was proving successful. Her music videos were getting more views than ever. Her streaming numbers were through the roof. The Free Britney movement may have been boycotted these releases, but Britney's general fan base was going strong, as Britney's name was trending almost every month. The Free Britney movement was indirectly causing a spike in her music and merchandise sales. The fact of the matter is, is that people are talking about Britney Spears on a daily, as if they weren't already, they're talking about her in a much different light, but also on a more daily household basis. And Britney's team would capitalize off of this even further, as they were planning to re-release her album Glory, with even more songs. It was the same album with a few major changes. These changes were concerning to say the least. Number one, the removal of Tinashe's name from Slumber Party. Tinashe was the final person Britney Spears filmed a music video with until her hiatus, and she's been very supportive of the Free Britney movement. And Britney's team appeared to be well aware of this, as the new re-release of Glory replaced the old one, and Tinashe's name was cut out of the album entirely. The removal of Tinashe's name from Glory is a testament to just how controlling the conservatorship is. Number two, the Backstreet Boys. The new Glory re-release would feature two new original singles, including Swimming in the Stars, written by Matthew Coma, and Matches, a single with the Backstreet Boys. Some theorize this was recorded in 2015 during the Pretty World era, as Matthew Coma was reportedly working on that album, though the 30 to 40 songs were scrapped as Britney wanted to take a different approach. Matches featuring the Backstreet Boys was the biggest indicator that this was just a cash grab, as Britney has specifically expressed her disdain for them in the past. Ask another personal question. Yes, you can. Now, on your, on your Baby One More Time CD, which debuted, I think, at number one, there were three hooks on, uh, on after one of the songs at the end of it by the Backstreet Boys. Mm -hmm. Now, did you wonder, because we told everybody here at B96, we said on the air that if you pick up your new CD, you get three hooks of a new Backstreet Boys And we CD. played the special cut on the air for people to hear, and then, they, then we noticed the very next week it was number one sales in Chicago, too. We understand. Were you a little pissed off that they did that? Yeah, extremely. Why were you pissed off? Well, I wasn't really pissed off, but I just heard that they thought that they they took it as that they were helping me out. And that kind of hurt my feelings. Like, um, they were like, well, let's not write that we were on there. When really, I was trying to help them out, you know? But, um, that's what I, was, I thought. I mean, I, it's over with and it's done now and there's nothing really done. But I was kind of upset that they said that. If they wouldn't have said anything, I could have cared less. But, I mean, can you? down the road when somebody goes to pick up my CD, they're going to have the Backstreet Boys on it, and by then, who knows who the Backstreet Boys are going to be. Number three, RCA's involvement. 
The promo for the rollout of this album was bizarre as well, as RCA changed their logo to one with Britney swimming in the stars cover. RCA was really pushing this re-release and promoting it in any way they could. Even though they had several new albums to promote, they were focusing on a single off of one that was released in 2016. This just shows how Britney's team saw the Free Britney movement last year and had no idea about the firestorm that would hit them the next year. Hi, my name is Samantha Stark. I'm the director of Framing Britney Spears. Number four, Britney's social media. Britney's social media, on the other hand, seemed to do only what was contractually obligated of her for these releases, and they were all released on multiple vinyls to make as much money as possible. And finally, number five, the visuals. The new cover art and photo shoot had a lot of people talking as well. Some photos of Britney chained to a house and in front of a stack of cars caused the most commotion. These photos were further symbolic as they were shot by David Lush. Chappelle, who's been a very big proponent for the Free Britney movement. This re-release did feature the full vision for the album, and fans got a glimpse into Britney's creative process that was completely suppressed by RCA back in 2016. Britney's conservatorship knew there was tons of press surrounding Britney, and just like they pushed her right into work back in 2008 after she was 51 50 they were doing the same with her tumultuous court battle, again using Britney's personal life for their own financial gain. The Glory re-release is just another testament to a hard time period for Britney that was exploited for financial gain by her conservatorship. These releases were very controversial, as by this point, the Free Britney movement was huge. We are boycotting the brand because any and all monies made through Britney the brand are funding her conservatorship, and that's not what I stand for. It's abusive. It's robbing her of everything that she's worked for. She's given us and the world so much and these people are stripping her and have stripped her of all of it. I've been a fan of Britney since the very beginning. I was always a little bit wary of things but 2019 with the voicemail that we all know is when I was like okay like this is really wrong. After then you know with the re-release of Glory and everything I was kind of like does she want this or is this also a money grab. Like I always kind of view releases and things like that after knowing these things as money grabs. Let's put the conservatorship aside for a second. Like I think it's good for when an artist puts out an album, it's successful, and then maybe a year or so later they re-release it with a couple extra songs. I think that that's fabulous. I think it's a great business plan, but considering everything that I know, it's up. The past 13 years had been filled with heartache, abuse, and injustice for Britney, all while her conservatorship continued to make as much money as possible off of her name. Teen conservatorship had gotten comfortable, but all of this was coming to a head, as in the coming year, Jamie Spears and his lawyers would face what they had done to her. The courts may have let them slip away, but the court of public opinion was about to have their first trial on nationally syndicated television. I understand that every story needs a villain. The whole world is getting involved. Brittany knows that her daddy loves her. I went from feeling completely hopeless and helpless to hopeful. Like you just want to go rescue her and bring her to your house and treat her right like the human that she is. We're geared up for a battle to get Brittany out of this. The fight's not over.